Cliftonville under-14's boss Chris Watson knew this match with Derby rivals Linfield would warrant a serious pre-match briefing, ensuring here his team would be well drilled for the occasion. Each side had won all four of their matches going into this duel, meaning a winner would move three points clear at the top of the table. We joined them at the Dubs 3G pitch on Friday night, just as autumnal weather started to draw in around Belfast, meaning a cold encounter for both teams. Cliftonville in red and Linfield in blue, attacking the left of the screen. Sam Glenfield clear on goal and unlucky with this strike. Linfield dominated the early stages. This attack created from deep inside their own half down the right-hand side and commanding the tempo. Dylan Rhodes did well to keep control under pressure before releasing a curled effort from a tight angle. Then the possession pendulum started to swing, especially in midfield battles, as both teams sussed one another out. On the stroke of the 12th minute, it was Cliftonville who looked to have opened, but despite this loose ball escaping a clattered pile of bodies on the edge of the area, it slipped just wide of the post. A red's throw in sparked a battle to keep the Blues at bay. Podrick McVicker and Michael Morgan's attempts to steer play back into midfield were scuffered by William Francie's instinctive downward header before Owen McCarthy spied Sam Glenfield unmarked and in wait. Sean Moore scrambled to pick him up before Matthew Williamson did well to deny him from close range. And the follow-up was just wide of the mark. Cliftonville had been reminded of Linfield's quality, their defenders working to keep the Blues at arm's length, but they had been doggedly knocking at the door. These attempts to clear it long ended up somewhat short, but even with the tenacious Glenfield eyeing up his opportunities, including a rather audacious volley, Williamson was well warned. Berry showed himself as an excellent midfield marshal with intelligent movement and just the right passes to set his teammates into space, if not himself. The Reds, however, were far from quiet. This Linfield throw was knocked back to Chris Cope, whose clever look produced an excellent ball to Morgan up top. Morgan usurped Luke Reddington as his teammate surged forward to give him options, while Brody McKee's shot was blocked tightly that option became McVicker, whose powerful strike put the Reds ahead just before the half hour mark. Get in there! A Linfield throw just in front of our camera was ushered towards Williamson's goal, but the stopper gathered comfortably. After the break, Morgan began to pile on the pressure on the opposite side. And just as Linfield were working out a way to get back into this game, McKee sprinted away down the left flank. But he was forced into shooting from a difficult angle by Rory McConkle. Trailing yet determined, the Blues were constantly stepping up and their ability on the ball left Cliftonville watching over their shoulders. Williamson taking care of this shot from distance. McConville's quick reactions and precision were called on to keep things tight at the back when Linfield made changes to go for a three-man defence. Elsewhere, they played a high line and mounted pressure chasing an equaliser, but it was Cliftonville who were on the ascendancy, McConville getting back after Kenzie McMullen and Morgan conspired inside the area. Rian Brown's long kick-out tested Stephen Bradley's pace up top, but he did brilliantly to fend off four red shirts while dribbling at speed and was unlucky with the shot just wide of the far post. Cliftonville's throw in close to the area was eventually handled, resulting in a free kick from a promising position, but this nicely dispatched set piece was absolutely no trouble for Brown. Barry's great vision was on show again, as well as solid combination play. Freeing himself up on the right-hand side, he worked to deliver a really good low cross into the box before a Linfield teammate pounced, but he scuffed a shot wide.
Back down the other end, it was another tantalising duel between McConville and McKee. The Cliftonville forward's brilliant ball sailed into Joel McKnight's path for a really nice low finish beating Brown. A very even match, perhaps shaded on technique by Linfield, yet Cliftonville fully deserving of the win following an outstanding team effort and work rate, moving them three points clear at the top. It finished full-time Linfield nil, Cliftonville two. Absolutely, absolutely. Two really, really strong teams. Um, Linfield, credit to them, put ourselves under a lot of pressure, um, but even more credit to my boys. Um, I thought they were superb start to finish. Um, Rode a lot a couple of times, but listen, that's football, so we, we've done very well. Yeah, I thought we, Podrick McVicker and Chris Cope from us were, you know, just a wee bit above everybody else. First half, Potty, some of his decision making, um, his touches were out on really, really good, you know, outstanding. So. I'm, I'm really pleased for them too, but overall, I'm, I'm proud of the whole team. Um, overall, I thought, you know, we did right our luck, as I said, but I think overall we just took our chances. I think they, we restricted those demons to a lot of long shots, which suits us, um, but that means we're doing our job and the defence is doing its job. That's uh, five out of five, so we're sitting top of the league. We have five good results, um, but we're taking one game at a time. Um, I'm going to go again train on Tuesday and I'll go for next Saturday. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, I thought we controlled the game for most of it. Um, for the first 30 minutes, I think we had the most possession of the, the game. Like. But it ended up that we got hit with uh, some bad defending and look, Cliff and Bill were good in the, the finishing. Like. So 1 0 down at half time like, and we went on in the second half. I think we were caught on the counter again towards the second half. Like. But I thought the boys dug in well. Just the quality wasn't there for us today. Like. I thought we might have changed the game at that third stage. It was just uh, unlucky and just a wee bit more composure inside the box and uh, we'd have finished it. We'd definitely the boys would have responded, but we put them under good pressure. Well, I think we were pushing too many forward, like, but we were always going to do that. We weren't going to sit back and not have a goal. Like, so when we did have a goal, we just got caught in the counter. Like, so listen, just one of them there days, like, we'll respond and come back to it.